Once upon a time there lived, in a village in the mountains, a little cowherd without either father or mother. His real name was Michael, but he was always called the Star Gazer because when he drove his cows over the fields, he went along with his head in the air, gaping at the sky. As he had white skin, blue eyes and hair that curled all over his head, the village girls used to cry after him, Well, stargazer, what are you doing? And Michael would answer, Oh, nothing, and go on his way without even turning to look at them. The fact was, he thought them very ugly, with their sunburnt necks, their great red hands, their coarse petticoats and their wooden shoes. He had heard that somewhere in the world there were girls whose necks were white and whose hands were small, who were always dressed in the finest silks and laces and were called princesses. At night, he and his friends sat around the fire, looking into the flames and imagining their future lives. His friends had very ordinary fancies, but he dreamed that one day he would marry a princess. One morning, about the middle of August, just at midday when the sun was hottest, Michael ate his dinner of a piece of dry bread and went to sleep under an oak tree. And while he slept, he dreamt of a beautiful lady, dressed in a robe of gold, who said to him, Go to the castle of Belloil, and and there you shall shall marry a princess. princess. That evening, the little cowboy, who had been thinking a great deal about the advice of the lady in the golden dress, told his dream to the farm people. But as was natural, they only laughed at the stargazer. The next day, at the same hour, he went to sleep again under the same tree. The lady appeared to him a second time and said, Go to the castle of Belloil, and you shall marry a princess. In the evening, Michael told his friends that he had dreamt the same dream again, but they only laughed at him more than before. Never mind, he thought to himself. If the lady appears to me a third time, I will do as she tells me. The following day, to the great astonishment of all the village, about two o'clock in the afternoon, a voice was heard singing, Rail, rail, how the cattle go! It was the little cowboy driving his herd back to the cowshed. The farmer began to scold him furiously, saying it was far too soon to bring the cows home. But he answered quietly, I'm going away. Made his clothes into a bundle, said goodbye to all his friends and boldly set out to seek his princess. There was great excitement throughout all the village and on top of the hill the people stood holding their sides with laughter as they watched the star gazer trudging bravely along the valley with his bundle at the end of his stick. It was enough to make anyone laugh, certainly. It was well known for a full twenty miles round that there lived in the castle of Belloil twelve princesses of wonderful beauty and as proud as they were beautiful and who were besides so very sensitive and of such truly royal blood that each would have felt at once the presence of a pea in her bed, even if the mattress had been laid over it. It was whispered about that they led exactly the lives that princesses ought to lead, sleeping far into the morning and never getting up till midday. They had twelve beds, all in the same room, 
But what was very extraordinary was the fact that though they were all locked in by triple bolts, every morning their satin shoes were found worn into holes. When the Duke asked what they had been doing all night, they always answered that they had been asleep. And indeed, no noise was ever heard in the room. Yet the shoes could not wear themselves out alone. At last the Duke of Belleoil ordered the trumpet to be sounded and a proclamation to be made that whoever could discover how his daughters wore out their shoes should choose one of them for his wife. On hearing the proclamation, a number of princes arrived at the castle to try their luck. They watched all night behind the open door of the princesses. But when the morning came, they had all disappeared, and no one could tell what had become of them. When he reached the castle at last, Michael went straight to the gardener and asked him for a job in the garden. And though the stargazer did not look very sturdy, the gardener agreed to take him on, as he thought that his pretty face and golden curls would please the princess. The gardener told Michael that when the princesses got up, he was to present each one with a bouquet. And Michael thought that if he had nothing more unpleasant to do than that, he should get on very well. And so he placed himself behind the door of the princess's room, with the twelve bouquets in a basket. When they arose, he gave one to each of the sisters. And so he placed himself behind the door of the princess's room, with the twelve bouquets in a basket. When they arose, he gave one to each of the sisters. The princesses took the flowers without even deigning to look at the lad, except Lena, the youngest, who fixed her large black eyes as soft as velvet on him and exclaimed, Ah, oh, how pretty he is, our new flower boy! The rest all burst out laughing, and the eldest pointed out that a princess ought never to lower herself by looking at a garden boy. Now the beautiful eyes of the princess Lena inspired Michael with a passionate longing to try his fate and see if he could discover the secret of satin shoes that were worn out every night. This was his only chance to win her hand in marriage. However, he did not dare to come forward, being afraid that he should only be jeered at or even turned away from the castle on account of his impudence. And so he loved the Princess Lena and her dark eyes without saying a word to anybody. Then the stargazer had another dream. The lady in the golden dress appeared to him once more, holding in one hand two young trees, a cherry laurel and a rose laurel, and in the other hand a little golden rake, a little golden bucket and a silken towel. She spoke to him as follows. Plant these two laurels in two large pots. Rake them over with the rake. Water them with the bucket. And wipe them with the towel. When they have grown as tall as a girl of fifteen, say to each of them, My beautiful laurel with the golden rake, I have raked you. With the golden bucket, I have watered you. With the silk towel, I have wiped you. Then after that, ask anything you choose, and the laurels will give it to you. Michael thanked the lady in the golden dress, and when he woke, he found the two laurel bushes beside him.
so he carefully obeyed the orders he had been given by the lady. The trees grew very fast, and when they were as tall as a girl of fifteen, he said to the cherry laurel, My lovely cherry laurel, with the golden rake, I have raked thee. With the golden bucket, I have watered thee. With the silk towel, I have wiped thee. Teach me how to become invisible. Then there instantly appeared on the laurel a pretty white flower, which Michael gathered and stuck into his buttonhole. As soon as he had done so, he saw his hands and arms disappear, and then his entire body, and soon he was completely invisible. That evening, when the princesses went upstairs to bed, he followed them barefoot, so that he might make no noise, and hid himself under one of the twelve beds, so as not to take up too much room. The princesses began at once to open their wardrobes and boxes. They took out of them the most magnificent dresses, which they put on before their mirrors, and when they had finished, turned themselves all round to admire their appearances. Michael could see nothing from his hiding place, but he could hear everything, and he listened to the princesses laughing and jumping with pleasure. At last, the eldest said, Be quick, my sisters, our partners will be impatient. At the end of an hour, when the stargazer heard no more noises, he peeped out and saw the twelve sisters in splendid garments, with their satin shoes on their feet, and in their hands the bouquets he had brought them. Are you ready? asked the eldest. Yes, replied the other eleven in chorus, and they took their places one by one behind her. Then the eldest princess clapped her hands three times and a trap door opened. All the princesses disappeared down a secret staircase and Michael hastily followed them. As he was following on the steps of the princess Lena, he carelessly trod on her dress. There is somebody behind me, cried the princess. They are holding my dress. You foolish thing, said her eldest sister. You are always afraid of something. It is only a nail which caught you. They went down, 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 till at last they came to a passage with a door at one end, which was only fastened with a latch. The eldest princess opened it, and they found themselves immediately in a lovely little wood, where the leaves were spangled with drops of silver, which shone in the brilliant light of the moon. They next crossed another wood where the leaves were sprinkled with gold and after that another still where the leaves were glittered with diamonds. At last the stargazer saw a large lake and on the shores of the lake twelve little boats with awnings in which were seated twelve princes who grasping their oars awaited the princesses. Each princess entered one of the boats and Michael slipped into the one which held the youngest. The boats glided along rapidly but Lena's, from being heavier, was always behind the rest. We never went so slowly before, said the princess. What can be the reason? I don't know, answered the prince. I assure you I am rowing as hard as I can. On the other side of the lake, the garden boy saw a beautiful castle, splendidly illuminated, 
from which came the lively music of fiddles, kettle drums and trumpets. In a moment they touched land and the company jumped out of the boats and the princes, after having securely fastened their boats, gave their arms to the princesses and led them to the castle. Michael followed and entered the ballroom with them. Everywhere were mirrors, lights, flowers and silk hangings. The stargazer was quite bewildered at the magnificence of the sight. He placed himself out of the way in a corner, admiring the grace and beauty of the princesses. Their loveliness was of every kind. Some were fair and some were dark. Some had chestnut hair or curls darker still, and some had golden locks. Never were so many beautiful princesses seen together at one time. But the one whom the cowboy thought the most beautiful and the most fascinating was the little princess with the velvet eyes. With what eagerness she danced. Leaning on her partner's shoulders, she swept by like a whirlwind. Her cheeks flushed, her eyes sparkled, and it was plain that she loved dancing. As they came back, Michael gathered a branch from the wood with the gold spangled leaves. And now it was the eldest princess who heard the noise that it made in breaking. It is nothing, said Lena. Only the cry of the owl, which roosts in the turrets of the castle. As soon as she got up, she found the branch in her bouquet. When the sisters went down, she stayed a little behind and said to the cowboy, Where does this branch come from? Your Royal Highness knows well enough, answered Michael. So you have followed us? Yes, princess. How did you manage it? We never saw you. I hid myself, replied the stargazer quietly. The princess was silent a moment and then said, You know our secret. Keep it. Here is the reward for your discretion. And she flung the boy a purse of gold. I do not sell my silence, answered Michael, and he went away without picking up the purse. For three nights Lena neither saw nor heard anything extraordinary. On the fourth she heard a rustling among the diamond spangled leaves of the wood. That day there was a branch of the trees in her bouquet, 